when you drive up the road. It says Pull Bridge and you hang a right turn to spend those 30 miles wondering what that is and then when you turn the corner, there's the Pull Bridge Mercantile. It's one of the last outposts in Montana. Well, I first came on a backpacking trip. On my way back out, I was running out of gas. I stopped in and noticed the Merc was for sale and thought, oh wow, how wonderful it would be to just live up here in the wild and run the store to get away from it all. Flannery and I came back looking for a place to get married. And we'd fallen in love with the area and the mountains right behind the Merc and it's just amazing and thought, let's just buy this place and then we could get married here. We just had this determination that we're just gonna do this and we had no idea how. Six months later, we were there training to be the next owners. I think there was definitely a lot of skepticism, you know, especially because we were so young. Oh, we were gonna be able to run this operation as good as the previous owners. We didn't have any experience running our own enterprise. You know, it took a little while, but I think we had to show that we were gonna work hard. After that, I think people started to embrace us. The bakery became well known among many groups of people to be that far away from civilization, from everything, and yet people will make the journey just to get something delicious. It makes me proud. Let's see what our expectations are. For me, I've always been on the path to make the world a better place because we do make people really happy and it's so amazing to see and to hear and watch people hold that pastry and not talk for at least five bites and just kind of pace and look at the store, but really the only thing that they're thinking about is all the different flavors and textures going on with every bite. I mean, it feels so cool to be able to affect people. The people that live in Polebridge, even though they are pretty independent and like their solitude, they definitely need some sort of social opportunities. As human beings, we need to be social, I think. And the Merc is definitely that place for a lot of people. They definitely come in, even if it's just for a cup of coffee or something small, or even if they don't buy anything, just to come in and say hi and talk to whoever's there. Yes. Hey, how you doing? We bake on demand, and so it's always fresh, which is also unique to our bakery, versus having everything baked off the night before. We start at 5 a.m., we mix our doughs, and then we start making pastries and muffins and loaves of bread, and then we make our sandwiches all throughout the day, and then we end our day with cookies. We make our own puff pastry, which is a little different than other bakeries, and I think it's why it tastes so much better. Most bakeries use a sheeter, so they feed the dough through, but we just use our rolling pin, and they take three days to make. People don't usually, if they're coming there for the first time, their expectation is not that they're gonna get something good to eat, especially something that people have put that much thought into making from scratch. 
they're driving all the way up this really bumpy road and they're thinking why are we doing this should we turn around and then they get there and it's like wow there's a town here and wow there's a bakery part of our hook too is you know people drive 35 miles into the middle of nowhere and the stuff's coming out as people are coming in the store and seeing the stuff come right out of the oven and sometimes having the opportunity to get a piping hot pastry or roll that's just you know, minutes out of the oven the previous owner used to say that he's kind of a, a modern-day trapper. The smell, that's kind of his trap that he sets for people walking in the door, and people can't resist that. There's about 15 people that live in Pole Bridge. There's still a lot of people that live in the North Fork area that have to haul their own water. And, you know, we only get mail twice a week. There's no electricity, there's no grid anywhere near Pole Bridge. The people that live up there are all very self-sufficient, independent people. There's no one who will supply us with anything, so we have to go to town to get all the supplies. So we're the delivery people. So we're basically the jack of all trades, and that's different from any other convenience store or bakery. You have to do all those other responsibilities besides just running a bakery. The main thing that we've tried to do is make the Merc as able to function as possible in the 21st century without losing its history. I would really love to see the mercantile 100 years from now serving the same function. Um, in the same booth that I use for all the cakes and stuff, I don't know. It's, it's like probably just a One of the decisions that we've made that I've been really conflicted with is the closing in the winter because it just seems so contrary that we want to preserve its historical use and here we are closing it down in the winter. It just makes me wonder if sometime along this journey, if there was a way to make the place efficient where it wouldn't cost so much money to be open year round. We live and work and sleep together. We have the same exact schedule and lifestyle. I think it has brought us closer, you know, I mean, it's been challenging that we've had to do things that a lot of couples don't. It's difficult trying to keep our business relationship separate from our personal relationship. The Mercantile is not just a bakery or just a general store, but it's also the epicenter. And then it's also a grocer of last resort. If they don't want to drive 45 miles, they can come into the Merc and usually find pretty much anything or something that will work for what they need.
macaroons are pecan shortbread with fudge on top. These are chocolate chip. lifestyle is manic. You go from four months of people to no one. And at first it's a really welcomed change when the season slows down and you get to step outside when the sun's setting and it's quiet and you just get to remember why you were there. It's just an amazing place to live and being so connected to nature and the weather and wildlife and the environment. You have to find time to get away when everything around you is so beautiful. I think it's the total disconnection from your other life. You take 30 miles to drive, and in that 30 miles, your pace of life slows down because you can't drive fast. So you drive slow, makes you observe things a little more. Pretty soon you're losing your cell phone service. You are completely disconnected from whatever was happening the hours before. And then all of a sudden you're just stepping back in time and you're eating good food and you don't have anything to do except take a walk. Just being able to live somewhere unique and love the place where you live and call it your spiritual home is, is really something that I love. We have to feel lucky.